Kepler equation? Yeah, both both of the files that are called Kepler and um, homework one and rel acceleration or something like that. Just put them in the same folder and we'll open from there. Okay, so I was saying um, the RP, whatever there was, I don't remember the numbers, it was you know, three numbers that I gave you, one, two, and three, you, you would not need to change these, right? Because you are at petty G. Uh, the thing that you would change to be in a circular orbit is the velocity. Are we recording now? Cool. So instead of the velocity I gave you, you will have to have uh, zero, I believe it was on the second component, square root of mu over RP, the norm, because that's what we have for a circular orbit, zero. And why is it on this one? Because I believe there was a zero in the position here. These, are, these were two numbers, 8,000 8, or 6,000, I don't, we'll, we'll open it up. Um, and so we know that on a circular orbit, position and velocity are always perpendicular to each other. There's no radial velocity component. So that makes sense, the velocity has to be here so that the dot product with position is always zero. And so you will basically reuse my same initial conditions, just tweak the velocity so that instead of being whatever I gave you, I think it was 8.5, it was a pretty elliptical orbit, uh, it, it gives you a circle, right? Have you tried to run, um, where are the files? You go to open, you gotta go to local H, and then desktop, and there should be class demo folder. Thank you. Okay, so before I talk about that, the homework, which by the way, I think it was pretty straightforward. Most of it was already done for you. So don't expect that for the future. This is the beginning. I want you guys to get involved and understand what we're doing, but um, you know, you should rely more and more on your ability to solve problems. But um, now, do you see it uh, okay here? So last time we rushed because I wasn't able to go online and I'm still not able to go online. Um, I don't know why. I'll talk to the IT people. And so I, I'm not going to do anything new today. I, I want to address the few concerns that uh, came up last time about the Kepler's equation. So this is what I was doing last time. I, I, the same, I think this is the same orbit I gave you in the homework, right? At least at the beginning. 8,000. Uh, zero, 6,000, can you all see it? Zero, 8.5, zero, pretty elliptical. So the first portion of this is actually what you had to do in the homework, which is computing the, uh, um, I hope this runs. Yeah, do whatever you want, run. Okay. You know, H cross product, uh, the eccentricity, as I said, was pretty high, 0 0.8. So just, you know, the, the basics. These are the, the things that you always have to do uh, when you're given, as in this case, position and velocity, compute H, compute E, decide what it is. Given the norm of E, you know, if it's an, uh, a parabola or uh, an ellipse, as in this case, it's, uh, it's an ellipse. So you do perigee, apogee. This does have a period because it's a closed orbit. Of course, you don't talk about period for a parabola or a hyperbolic orbit, they don't come back, so there's no T, um, capital T. And so, and then that's, you know, something that you have to do for the homework too. And this is the period. Okay, now I am playing with different values of T desired. So I'm trying to solve here the Kepler equation, which is mean anomaly is equal to capital E minus little e sine of E, right? which should be this function here. So uh, it's just rewriting this same expression, uh, bringing me on the other side. So we'll try to find the zero of this. And we said that this doesn't have a, a, an analytical solution, a closed form solution. I was going to project the page on the book where they show you how uh, basically me, as, as you change me, you get different plots for, uh, I think it was, yeah, I can try to try to reproduce that plot. Of course, it's not going to show to me. Oh, yeah, it does. So um, as a function of true anomaly here, if you go from 0 to pi, so if you start plotting this with, you know, uh, changing theta, computing the corresponding e, etc., you get um, 
and this is going to be uh, until the pi, I believe, 2 pi as well, yeah. Uh, so basically you get monotonic, exp mon monotonic functions. You get a line for E equals 0. So this is something that you, you will have to plot in MATLAB if you want. And then as you start changing the eccentricity, they start going in a particular way like this as you increase eccentricity. But the point is that they are monotonic functions. So as you choose a time, and remember that this is for an ellipse, we said it's 2 pi over the period of time, your desired time. You want to know where you are at a specific t star, right? So uh, if I decide what is the time of interest, you basically decide where you are here on the y-axis. And so for each eccentricity, you have one of these curves. There is only one solution, right, that we need to find numerically. That's what we try to do. And so that, uh, on my version of the book, is figure 3.2. But it's just there to show you that you should not expect uh, any issues solving this, because they're all monotonic functions. So you can find a 0, no problem, with some numerical method like Newton, Newton's method. So. Uh, that, that's important to know. So, and here I was playing with different values of desired time. So instead of doing what I have right now, let me let me change this. What would be, you know, in general, if I just enter a number here, I don't know what the true anomaly should be, but I do know some particular values, what to expect, right? So what what are those values? For example, uh, I don't know. Half an, half an orbital period, where do you expect the uh, true anomaly to be? What if you are on an elliptical orbit? This is a pretty elliptical one, right? And I'm telling you that the period of this is capital T, and I want to know where the satellite is in terms of true anomaly, theta at t over 2. Where is the satellite? Pi. It's a pi, right? This is symmetric. Everything is symmetric. What happens here is just repeated here uh, and, and, and over and over again. So you're going to be here. That's what I should get, or 180 degrees. And if I run this code, that is what I get. 180, I just converted in degrees the true anomaly here uh, that I compute from this expression. This was, I think, the expression where there was a little bit of concern. Why? Because you see that arc tangent, but that's okay. We said last time. So what is it that we have there? Um, theta is twice the arc tangent of what square root of uh, one plus e, one minus e. And then I have tangent of theta um, e over 2, right? Yep. That is line 32. So I'm not even addressing these lines here where I'm actually solving for the eccentric anomaly. Uh, but uh, So this is one case where I forced... Uh, the, the eccentric anomaly to be at pi over 2, because remember how the eccentric anomaly was defined? I built that circle around my elliptical orbit, right? And so there are some points where this is supposed to be a circle. And uh, let, me, let me just look at a generic true anomaly. I connect this point of intersection extending the radius with the circle with the center of the ellipse and this is my capital E and of course if theta equals 0 or for example theta equal pi the two angles are the same right by construction that's what you get so that's why I wanted to show you that case first where I have half orbital period because I know there that the eccentric anomaly as well is going to be pi and and that's that is where the concern came where, well, I'm, I have to do a tangent of pi over 2, but MATLAB does it. We say it's undefined, but it's infinity. And when you do the arc tangent of, in, of plus infinity, um, you do get pi over 2. So that gives you actually a, a reasonable value, something that uh, makes sense. 
And uh, uh, so that's, you know, that is no concern. Why am I doing this now? Oh, well, maybe I should spend a few words on how I'm, I'm finding the eccentric anomaly. So this is the numerical part. So I'm going to stop this. By the way, this, this debugging and putting dots all over the place, you should really start learning uh, about debugging if you haven't done it before. That is the only way you can find errors in your code. Yes? What's the difference between the red dots and Like before, I put a dot and it was black, right? Uh, I think I think it's only telling you that you've changed something and you haven't saved the file. Yeah. I think what it, I think if I erase, for example, these two, I'm not sure. I think that's what it is. Yeah. yeah see, yeah, it just it just warns you that you have breakpoints, uh, but you you've changed something. Um, it's just a warning that you were debugging and in and you forgot that you were debugging and you started changing stuff. So. Uh, my only way of finding errors in, in MATLAB code that I develop is going line by line. When I get a complex number, I don't expect a complex number, I get something weird out of one line, th then I go line by line and I monitor what the variables are doing. So, for example, now I run it again, it's going to stop at the first uh, dot here. And, and this is where I'm solving numerically that equation that I erased. Again, it's, uh, well, it's zero equals m uh, minus m e plus e minus little e sine of e with a plus or minus it doesn't matter what does the big m e mean again? it's the mean anomaly we have computed that this is 2 pi over t this is the uh, orbital period for a circle or an ellipse uh, this is 2 pi and this is your uh, desired time you want to know where you are at that desired time so someone asks you in half an hour where the spacecraft is going to be. So in your mind, true anomaly, uh, I'm sorry, mean anomaly is time, desired time. So this part of this class where we're solving numerically for you know, positions as functions of times, there isn't much in terms of dynamics that is involved. There is a lot of trigonometry and you will see when I do parabolas and hyperbolas, I'm going to just skip the steps and just give you the equation to solve probably. So I, I usually do... Uh, the procedure, I show you the procedure for one case and then the other ones you can look in the book because there's really nothing beneficial in memorizing the steps other than knowing that this is the equation you need to solve and this is in your mind time and this is a auxili auxiliary variable that we have defined because this way we can solve uh, for position right, these again, these are all monotonic functions, you can solve them, there is no ambiguity so this is all you need to remember. Uh, mean anomaly is really means time, nothing else than that. This E is that strange angle eccentric anomaly that we have defined. And uh, from that, we can eventually get to uh, the actual anomaly. So Kepler, this function that I'm trying to zero out is, well, yeah, it's exactly that one, is capital E minus little e sine e minus the eccentric anomaly. And so I'm calling F0, which I believe uses the Newton method. Uh, so this F0 called on the function Kepler, which has these three inputs, but by saying at E, I'm just telling F0, you need to find the E so that that function goes to zero. So look at uh, E as your X. If you want to rewrite this, you can just say that you're trying to find the zero for a, a function of X, right? Where F of X is this minus ME plus x minus e sine of x, nothing else. This is a given constant, and this is a given constant because I gave you, I want the position at that time. Make sense? So that's what is f0 doing. I am just specifying here that you need to find the zero of this Kepler function that has all these inputs, but the variable that has to give me the zero that I want to find is, is capital E. The other ones are just you know constants, inputs that I need. But an x zero is an initial guess. You need to tell that function where to start doing the iterations from. Uh, bless you. As in every numerical method that tries to find a zero, uh, you need to start from an initial point. But there is no problem. You can start basically always from zero because, as I said before, everything is monotonic. So there's no there's no up and you know there's no multiple zeros there. So you don't run the risk of finding the wrong zero. There is only one. Does it make sense? So if, uh, yeah, I don't think I need this. 
to put it in uh, simple words, if you have you know, X and Y plane and uh, you have just a straight line, if I choose a Y value, it's going to correspond to only one and only one X star value. And for monotonic functions, it's the same. It means they just, just go up consistently or down consistently. You, you, you don't have anything that that stays, right? So we, we're not concerned about that. You can always start from zero. Now, um, and then what I'm doing after this function finds my eccentric anomaly, which it does, it's, this is, again, it's half an orbital period, so the eccentric anomaly was expected to be pi, and that's what it gives me, and I just convert it in degrees to print it out because it's, it's nicer, it's 180. And then I convert uh, through that expression up there uh, into true anomaly. Now, why am I doing this? I could completely forget about this if then else. This is just printing out the true anomaly and correcting it if I get a negative value. Now, uh, I'm going to ask you this question. Do I really need that kind of correction? Or can I do something a little more intelligent? I mean, that's one way of doing it. But I could get, I could get negative values. Because it's an arc tangent, right? And the tangent function, if this is your unit circle here, is, you know, this is, if you have an angle, this is the tangent of the angle, this, uh, uh, this y coordinate here. Um, so it does, it does give you also negative outputs. If you go beyond, for example, if you go at pi over 2 with your angle, whatever that is, well, you plus infinity. But the moment you go after, say that you are 100 degrees here, this is what you do, right? So you can get negative values. And you know what? I'm going to stop this and actually force it to give me a negative value, just for fun. So that happens when I ask for the time, which is, what, the, what, what? What's the problem? Why don't you want to go away? OK. What is this? UF does not like me, that's for sure. Not even MATLAB likes me. Yeah, what is the clear all? I don't see the... Uh... Yeah, thanks. OK. Uh, okay, so this, this should be one of those cases where the true anomaly ends up being negative, I hope. No, it's not. Oh, yeah, sorry, wrong, wrong time. I went beyond, if you notice, I went a little beyond one period, and I really don't need to do that. Uh, so actually, that is the question that I had for you. Let's just do two, two thirds of the orbital period. That should, I think that was giving me a negative. Right. Okay, so now I'm past the apogee, right? In mo it's more than half an orbital period. So given the, uh, how these are made, the eccentric anomaly is always going to be, you know, something that goes from 0 to, to 2 pi. The, go back to that plot, it's, it's, it's completely going up, it's a monotonic function, so you're never going to get a negative one from there, but you do from that arc tangent instruction here, you can get a true anomaly which is a negative uh, value. And so what I am doing there is I'm just, I'm just correcting. So if that is telling me that my true anomaly is now negative, so it's basically counting this way, it's somewhere here, with if then else that I'm doing there, I'm just correcting and, and computing this angle here because that's, that's how we define true anomaly, we just go counterclockwise, it's just a convention, right? So that is one way that, of doing it. So you check, if it's negative, uh, you do the fix here, you print it out, and, uh, and now it's some positive angle more than pi, yeah, 191 degrees. That is one way. Is there another way? That is perfectly fine. If you want as the output for your position, which is the true anomaly, 
uh, that theta angle, if you always want as an output something that is 0 to 360, then you do that correction and you're fine. Uh, I can show you that you can go all the way around to the orbital period and you get 360 and it's, it's working. So that is perfectly fine. Is there another way of doing it? So when you get to line uh, 32 and that gives you a negative angle, gives you this, whatever it is, alpha, which is negative. Is there another way to do it? Yeah, that's what I've done, right? 2 pi plus that angle gives me theta. But I guess my question could be a little more elaborated. Do I really need, if I give you a time desired, which is more than half an orbital period, does, do you really need to care? There's no trick here, so this is perfectly fine. You can do this and you're, you're good. I'm just thinking alternatives. What happens with all the orbits that we have seen? What is one of the properties of these orbits? Line of ups, they are what? They're symmetric, right? So, quite frankly, I don't even care what happens down here. I could stop here, right? If you ask me for something, so this is 0 times 0, and this is time t over 2, right? Perigee, apogee. I could stop at solving that for times that are between t 0 and, 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 and t over 2. If someone asks me for something more, then it's, it's, it's say that you're asking me this position which occurs, I don't know, 100 seconds after. So it's t over 2 plus 100 seconds. Well, you can solve for the theta at uh, t over 2 minus 100 seconds. If everything is symmetric, right? You get this angle here. You do your math and compute this other angle here. Everything is symmetric. Does it make sense? So you can really solve that Kepler equation between 0 and t over, capital T over 2, and you're fine. If someone is asking you what happens after that, you can always bring it back to 0 t over 2 because the rest is symmetric, but that is not required at all. So this, this fix will do it. Uh, let me just complete this uh, first portion by saying that, uh, that this does work. So if I do orbital period, do you have any questions, by the way? Yeah? Why are you not asking? Um, Ask. Is your velocity also symmetric along that path? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything is symmetric, yeah. So, yeah, 360. So, so, as far as I'm concerned, you do this and you're just fine. Of course, another thing that doesn't make sense, if someone asks you what is the position in three orbital periods, I mean, you should know what that is. It's 360 again, or 360 times three, but then, you know, it's, these are periodic. And this only applies, of course, for uh, circular and elliptical orbits. As you go to parabolas and uh, hyperbolas, that, that doesn't work anymore. You can go with the time to infinity, and you're actually going, as we'll see Friday, you're going towards the asymptote, for example, for uh, uh, hyperbolic trajectories, of course. So sy symmetry there is, is applies, but you're not coming back. So, uh, okay. Any other questions on this? Yes. So is using the symmetry instead of subtracting from the 360, is that like more efficient code or just? No, I don't think so. The, the efficiency here is lost, if you want, in the fact that you have to do numerical. So every time you have to do something numerical, it's repeating the same operation several times. And as far as I'm concerned, working with hardware, for example, in the lab, every time you have iterations is not the best. While what you do here is, is just adding, subtracting angles. So you do it that way or another way. It's, just, it's a plus or a minus. It's an addition or a subtraction. It's really not a big deal. So I don't think so. That's, that's why I said it doesn't make it efficient. But it is a good habit that you start thinking and exploiting the properties of these orbits, they are symmetric. So some of the things that you think you have to do may be simpler than they actually are. Uh, okay, I think that really covers, you know, solving for the Kepler's equation. If you do it this way, you're, you're fine. It's going to work for every time you care about between zero and, 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 and uh, capital T, your orbital period. I think I want to move on and do the last few. So by the way, this is online. I updated these after I posted it the first time because I felt like uh, I wanted to make it a little more general, which it is now. Now, say that instead we do the simple 
the simple part where you tell me what is the true anomaly that you desire and you want time. That's pretty easy, right? Uh, say that you want your true anomaly is pi. So what should I get? What is the time at pi? It's t over 2, so just, just to make sure that this works. So now I'm doing the opposite. Now I go from true anomaly, I go through eccentric anomaly. It's the same expression that I actually erased. But if you look at it, it's the same. It's 2 arctangent. Now square root of this, this uh, fraction here is, is uh, inverted, of course. is 1 minus e over 1 plus c. And then tangent of true anomaly desired over 2. But it's, it looks very similar, as you, as you know. So now you go from true anomaly to e. Uh, I'm doing my correction here. If e is less than 0, fix it. Just make it between 0 and, and, and 2 pi. It doesn't make sense to go outside of that. And now you just directly compute the uh, mean anomaly. Again, mean anomaly, time. They're the same thing, except that 2 pi over t in front of it, uh, that, that is the same thing. And in fact, to get the time, I just multiply uh, times t over 2 pi. And that gives me what time it is when I go through that uh, true anomaly. And it should be really, uh, here, here it is. It should really be, yeah, time is 6 point whatever this, this value here. If I do t over 2, it should give me the same. It does. So it's working. Now, this is not even numerical. It's, it's really easy, right? And then you keep going. I have other cases here, at pi over 2. Um, so you can, you can play with this as much as you want. I don't know what I chose here. 3 pi over 2. You know, you get different times. Any other questions on this? We were going way too fast at the end last time, so I really wanted to spend more time on this code. And I need to talk to the IT people in this department. Yeah. Sorry. I, I, I tried it at home. It was working fine. OK, so you want to talk about the homework, maybe? No? You don't care? It was just way too easy? The exam is going to be very similar to this, except I'm not going to ask you to use any MATLAB. Because in 50 minutes, uh, it will be insane. And so actually, I was going to send you an email, but maybe I just put it on video. Do not bring your laptops. Uh, there are calculations that you need to do, but they really can be done by a regular you know, calculator. If you want to open your laptop, I'm not going to say anything. But um, first, no Wi-Fi. Second, you're probably going to annoy whoever is next to you, because unfortunately here, it's a little tight. You can, but you're not going to need your, a laptop. Yes. You know, you know, if I if I start from something like this, I give you a position and a velocity, and I tell you to compute the angular momentum and the eccentricity, I rely on the fact that you can do that by hands or with a regular calculator. It's really you know, it's two vectors. It shouldn't. I mean, you can do it in MATLAB, but it's just a matter of space. It's nothing else than that. I really designed the the, the exam is kind of ready. I really designed it so that. Of course, you don't have to plot anything in MATLAB. You don't have to integrate numerically equations. It's 50 minutes. I'm not going to do that. Yes? Two questions. Um, so if we're getting H and E, do you want the numerical values for like yeah. eccentric? You don't want like vector? Yeah, no, vector. You have to, you have to go through you the vector. Well, say, say that I'm, doing you, I'm giving you exactly that, right? Okay. A position as a vector in ECI. So that's a vector expressed in the ECI fixed coordinate system, right? X, Y, Z. And the velocity. So there are two vectors expressed in a certain basis. If, if I'm asking you the angular momentum, uh, that you need to go through the vector. How do you do it otherwise if you don't cross them? I mean, one, a case like this may be something easy because you can see it probably. But say that you have a full you know, three-component vector with all numbers, in it, yeah, you have to do the cross product. But so for like Apogee, you want us to have x, y, z components? Oh, no, 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 no. The, like no, no, no. <laughs> In fact, this uh, what I'm doing here. I think uh, even even for the homework, I think they are just positions. They're not okay. they're not vectors. It's uh, it's a uh, it's a length. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, because I know that, and you should know that uh, the perigee and the apogee are along the e vector. Is on the line of ups, so there is no ambiguity there. Uh, where if you want to express that as a vector, how you should do it, right? So if you find uh, the uh, as, as, as we're doing here in MATLAB, you find the norm of RP 
and I'm asking you for the RP vector, well, it's the norm of RP times, for example, E over the norm of E, which you must have computed ahead of time to get RP, right? That's, that's what we do there. Um, or, or a position of apogee as a vector, same story, is RA, now there is a minus here because it's pointing the other way. You do feel confident working with vectors and defining directions in space because this is an astrodynamics class. So dynamics means that you know how to deal with vectors a little bit. You don't have to be scared about defining unit vectors in appropriate directions. That's how you do it, for example. Right? That's, that's all you should expect, but no really no numerical integrations, no manual solutions of the Kepler equation, which I could actually ask you to do, but probably not. Uh, one thing that I can tell you is that there will be parabolas and hyperbolas in there, you know, lightly, but um, they will be there. I don't know why this is uh, not finding relative acceleration, because there is one that it's, has a different name. Oh, look at that. It's safe, it's safe. Put that two in it. Um, I must have already downloaded it. Yeah. Twice? Yeah. Here it is. Go away. Is it going to work? Yeah. So this now should run uh, and, and, and do what you guys have probably done already. Give you the answers to the different questions in the test. Warning. Oh. Okay. So I was asking you to, I don't want to go online on that, so I'm just going to open the PDF here. Just to remember what I was doing, it's it's you know everything was starting off the same. It was even the same initial conditions of, of that other problem. So you need to find angular momentum, eccentricity vector, perigee, apogee, same major axis, orbital period. Fine. Plot that. Done. Everything was done for you in this homework. The most of it. A and B was done. Now uh, point C also was done. I hope. Right. Basically, uh, use, use the parametric uh, expression, do uh, every one degree, recreate the R. Uh, and then, this was the new part where I was asking you to see what you need to be in circular orbit instead of elliptical when you are at the perigee and at the apogee. Let me see. Okay, so this is what I'm doing here. By circularizing a perigee, I just mean, okay, this will be my velocity at that particular position so that I can say I'm in, in a circular orbit because we know that the v-circular, at least the norm of it, is square root of mu over r, where r is constant for a circular orbit, so I'm just setting it to square root mu over the norm of r0, which is my initial position, which happened to be the perigee. I really haven't changed much uh, in terms of the original code and the, initial, the original problem. Um, <clears throat> and then, why am I doing that, as I said before? Because I know that the velocity itself as a vector, if you are in a circular orbit, it's only v normal u normal. So you don't have ever a v radial component, right? On a circular orbit, yes? I'm sorry? A negative number for the apogee of an uh, hyperbolic? Mm, no, no. What did I ask you? I asked for. I think it was pretty, uh, pretty clear. Distance from Earth's center apogee. So it's a distance. I don't think you give negative distances usually, unless, unless I'm talking about projection of a vector. No, no. It's it's a, it's a, it's a. The only case where we have seen that you do get a negative apogee RA, as you, if you apply the formula, is which one? Hyperbolic orbits, right? Because there is that branch which is the fake one where there is no spacecraft. And so if you apply the actual um, parametric expression for the uh, orbit, you get a negative RA. But we tweak it, we make it positive, and define still the same major axis, which is just a, a, a geometric value that we use. Uh, but yeah, that is the only case where you actually get a negative. So, uh, yeah, 
So does, does it make sense why then I have zero square root of mu over r zero? It's because the initial position was 8,000 zero, what is it? 8,000, zero, 6,000. So I need to make sure that not only I match the right velocity at that position, that, but also the velocity has to be normal to the radius. Otherwise, otherwise I'm not in a circular orbit. Right? If this is my focus F, the attracting planet, and this is my initial position, if I want to be in a circular orbit, I better make sure that this V0 not only is square root of mu over R, has to be normal. Because if it's not, this is not a circular orbit anymore. Probably elliptical, I don't know. I will have to compute H, uh, E, and everything. Right? Flight path angle for a circular orbit is what? Zero. Right? Circular orbit. Flight path angle is, is plat flight path angle is the elevation of your vector. What do we call it? Gamma. So unless it's not circular um, and you get some value, it's zero. Yes? What did I say first day? That the homeworks were to prepare you for the exams. So that is your preparation for the exam. Rely on this. So just if we can do this homework more fine, is there any like additional things? You can change the values that I give you, for example. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm not kidding. You can change and get different eccentricities, different orbits uh, uh, from all this code. Uh, you, can, you can even make it... Um, parabolic or hyperbolic and respond to the same questions. I would do that. Change the initial position, and, uh, well position you can leave it there. Change the initial velocity so that it's actually parabolic or hyperbolic and, uh, and try to see what you need to do to, to make it secure. So basically start with a different orbit. You can do that. So uh, really that there's no much more than this that you should expect uh, in the test. Um, Let's see. So we can have eccentricity is greater than one on the test? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And the rest is just I'm, I'm outputting everything everything that you need. So what is the, there was the 3D image. Did you all get this image here? The plot which disappeared. So you guys don't feel like uh, you're prepared for the test from this? No? Okay. Why not? It's a big unknown. It's, a, it's always a big unknown. You haven't done a test before <laughs> with me in this class. It was hard to follow the lectures and then go into the summer. Okay. Okay. It was, it was very much more difficult than I thought Okay. All right. I'll take note. Was there another question? Yeah. Uh, the uh, homework for this week. The homework. Oh, the extra credit question. Uh, I don't know if I have an extra credit question. I think I do. I I don't remember. I prepared it a few days ago. I don't think I do. I think his question was: Is the extra credit question on this homework on the exam? Well, yeah, you need to understand that there is so much that I can tell you in advance. Uh, more than telling you that the homework is going to be very the test is going to be very similar to this, uh, I really cannot do. So if you don't feel prep if you've been able, let's put it this way, if you have been able to solve this, other than the OD45, anything numerical that may be involved in plotting stuff, which is, again, not something that I'm going to ask you, uh, if the rest was a struggle, then you are in pretty bad shape. If you're not able to compute the angular momentum, the eccentricity vector, perigee, apogee, period, uh, if you don't know if something is circular or parabolic, if you don't know how to do these things, then you are in pretty bad shape, which means that you haven't been able to solve this correctly, which means if you have done it correctly, someone else has done it for you, so you still are in very bad shape. But if you have not struggled that much with this, you are in good shape. That was my idea with homeworks, uh, is to give you an idea of what to expect. Uh, I'm not going to ask you to solve the Kepler's equation, it's outside of this. 
I've done it Monday, but um, other than that, this is it. Yes. When? Whenever they're done. <laughs> I told them by Friday, possibly. But you do have the solution, right? This is the solution. Yeah, this is on my website. And I post it on Canvas, too. Sounds like we're done. Okay.